are you in a position where you want to stay in the room or you, you would like to leave or okay thank you very much Councillor Taylor Okay, what we have in this particular case is we have one of the councillors who's applied for planning permission for a small adjustment to his um, house. Um, normally it would go through on delegated, but because it's a councillor, it's come to committee meeting. So we will be discussing that later. Sorry, Councillor Metcalf, you were saying that you've got a prejudicial. Um, no, you, yourself, you, you, you've used the same words. If you feel it's prejudicial, then you will need to leave the room at the same time as well, I'm afraid. I would just I'll just have a quick consultation with my lawyer. Okay, um, I think we're using the wrong terminology here. The, the, the word prejudicial means that you have a financial interest or, or, or something similar in the actual project. I don't believe that to be the case. I just believe that you, you've got a per you, you know the, um, the councillor personally, as do we all, uh, but you've known him for a lot longer than we have. Um, so in that case, um, I'm happy for you to stay. Councillor Murdoch, just on in, in the interest of uh, impartiality, um, has requested to leave the room. as a personal choice, yes. Okay, everyone happy with this? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, any urgent items of business? Thank you. Um, and I think we will, if, we, if time permitting, because we could possibly have a long e evening tonight, we will have a look at that at the end of the night if everyone's happy. But we'll, have, we'll readdress that at the end of the evening. Thank you. Um, so we're right to address the uh, meeting. We have quite a few speakers again this evening. Um, so I've prioritised the order to accommodate the people with the most speakers. So um, item six... One Matlock Road now becomes item eight. Item seven stays as item seven. Item eight becomes item 10. Item nine becomes item six. Item 10 becomes item nine. Item 11 becomes item 12. Item 12 becomes item 13. And item 13 becomes item 11. And with that, I will hand over to you, Mr. Palmer. Thank you, Chairman. First item 35, Windermere Crescent. that there's been significant negotiations to get us to this stage. This application is with all matters reserved. We are looking at a detached 
bungalow, and that is a true bungalow, not a shally bungalow, with that footprint square shown there is the recommended location of the new bungalow with some off-street parking, uh, rear garden for private amenity space. We as officers have evaluated the merits of the scheme and we consider that these elevations, albeit illustrative because all matters are reserved, do reflect a form of development that can fit in this location without being materially harmful to the wider character of the area. Subject to that, Chairman, we are recommending the scheme for approval. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we have two speakers, one with the objector and one with the applicant. Um, we'll start with the objector, Mr. Kevin Richardson. If you want to come forward and sit in the centre of the room. In front of you, you'll have one of our speakers. Uh, just at the bottom right-hand corner, there's a grey-blue button. When you press that, the little red light will come on on your microphone and tell you that you're ready to speak. When you're happy, then you can start speaking. We have a traffic light system here. Uh, green light tells you you've got two minutes. Amber light means you've got one minute left. Red light means I will stop you from speaking. So it's three minutes in total for, your, for, for, for telling us. Okay, when you're ready. Okay. Okay, um, thanks for seeing me today and taking the time to allow me to express the objections. Um, not just my objections there, the neighbours' objections as well. Uh, I think the letter went out to 12 residents, 12 houses. Uh, six of those uh, put up an uh, objection onto the portal. So that's 50% uh, objection to the local area. Um, and this is, as you, as you explained, this is a fourth application for this site because it originally started as flats and it's been reduced down. Um, the actual main objections is overdevelopment because it's a residential area with families. Um, the layout that you had up on the board just a second ago uh, doesn't actually show that, that the existing number 35 has a double storey extension across the back of the property, uh, which effectively closes that whole area. So there would leave two residential properties with no gardens whatsoever. Um, and so that existing property is a five-bedroom house. So it leave a five-bedroom house with no garden and the new two-bedroom bungalow with no garden. There's a rear concrete area for bins and cycle storage, I think you find. Um, so the previous senior planner uh, from Eastbourne Council, she actually visited the site and she said that a residential property of this nature uh, with a smaller footprint for the detached house that was going on there before uh, wouldn't get permission because you can't really have no garden for residential properties. Um, this footprint is actually bigger because the other one was a detached house and had two storeys. So they've actually condensed that down to make a bigger footprint. And so there's actual, now there's considerably larger um, surface area covered by concrete. Um, so there's going to potentially cause water runoff, drainage issues, because we already have quite boggy gardens in the area and we are getting quite serious uh, because it's clay base, so it does get quite bad drainage. So if you cover that whole area, which is proposed, with uh, concrete, I think you're going to get serious flooding in that area. Um, the other thing is the footprint and size. It's effectively the uh, development before was for a three-bedroom three chalet bungalow, and effectively what's happened is they've just taken the dormers off to uh, alleviate the concerns of privacy and overlooking, and they've just left the same footprint, but with a, with a one-storey, single-storey. So I think the concern is that as soon as it gets approved, or if it gets approved, then the dormers will just be put back in, or there'll be Velux windows put back in in six months or a year's time, raising privacy concerns again. Um, there's no need for a single-storey to have such a high roof space, because that's going to create lots of light and the potential for future um, putting dormer windows in. That's originally why that, that was designed, and just taking those off hasn't really changed the design, I don't think. Um, so, in summary, I, I agree the site is suitable for a small development with a garden, um, but it's not. It's, the current proposal is overdevelopment. Um, it's inaccurate plan because you. Have I'm going to have to stop you there, I'm afraid you've run out of time. I'm going to have to stop you there. Sorry. Thank you.
Good evening. So, wait, small, before you start, just a small grey button at the bottom right hand corner of the box. When that goes on, the microphone comes on, and Thank when, you. when you're ready. Right. Um, my name's David Sands. I am the agent for the application. Um, there was some confusion at the start of it that it was um, going to be dormers put in um, or, or could be under permitted development. But I wrote, to, I wrote an email to uh, Luke Simpson from the planning department uh, on the 7th of February asking him to change the application name, which, um, which he subsequently did from the dormer bungalow which was left on from the previous application. Um, I did say in my email, um, as we discussed, there is no intention to utilise the loft space as this is not high enough um, for a dormer construction. Um, the roof may look um, slightly um, too large, but um, it's the right pitch for a tiled roof which is 30 degrees, no intention at all of going into the loft. Um, I agree totally with all the planning officers' uh, suggestions that um, things can be uh, amended at the full application stage, which um, is entirely possible. Um, Just that, um, thank you for listening to me, and I hope we're supported. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. If you could just turn the microphone off for us, please. Certainly. Lovely, thank you. Retake your seat. We've got Rosalind's at the top of the uh, application, um, which I now believe is, is Devonshire. <laughs> so, uh, who would like to start this one off? Anybody? Councillor Mayor. Thank you, Chairman. Um, <clears throat> I never expected to start in the beginning at this stage, but um, what I have seen and uh, hearing the, the speakers here um, and looking at all the thing and the visual look, which I, when I went to check everything there, I mean, personally, I looked at that area. I couldn't get really behind it because I'm a little bit too short man. <laughs> so, um, but to be honest with you, um, what I found really is nothing, nothing to really go against for this proposal. So I feel that the report here, what I've learned from it and what I've seen visually, I haven't got anything against it. So possibly, you know, I would go for the uh, officer's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Taylor. Thank you, Mr Chairman. I think Councillor Mir is absolutely right. Um, I think from my area that I represent, a corner plot like that is vulnerable for development. Oh, sorry, I thought I had a big loud voice. When people moan I'm too loud. Um, but uh, in actual fact, it was mentioned about the loss of amenity space, but I think the, the host property has an awful lot of amenity space. It may not be in the back garden, but uh, it is around the area. But, um, and I, ca I can see no real problem. I may ask the officers, it has been mentioned about the possible dormers coming along in the future, but they would, I'm sure, be possibly subject to a planning application if anybody wanted to put anything in the roof of that uh, particular bungalow. So uh, I, I can see no particular reason uh, for refusal, uh, Mr Chairman. Uh, do you want me to move, or has Councillor Muir already done that? Happy for you to move, if you'd like to move. Councillor Muir, would you like to second? Yeah. yeah. I'd, I'd just like to add in there before we take a vote. Um, when we went round to do the site visit, the plots, looking at the drawing here on the left-hand side, that one there yeah, has got some side windows. So at the moment, if we allow the, 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 the drawing to go through as is, there's going to be a little bit of overshadowing um, up against those windows. 
and I'm also concerned, like everybody else, is about the fact that that could be developed into um, a loft space afterwards. Um, there is 2.5 metres there that, 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 that's more than adequate enough to, to, to be able to do that. So if we could make sure that either we have a hip roof on there or we make sure that there, that there will be absolutely no development allowed afterwards, then I'm happy for that to uh, go through. Chairman, um, assist there. Uh, members are very keen to have further control over uh, loft changes we can have a positive condition to control that it doesn't exist at the moment apart from condition seven that has a height uh, restriction but that doesn't stop the loft space being converted necessarily so we can put a condition on restricting um, or requiring any additional velux and or dormers requiring planning permission Thank Lovely, you. thank you. I think because we've had a number of applications here before and they've all been too large, I think this plot is crying out for development, but it needed to be something nice and small. And I think this one fits in well with the street scene and, and what we've got already. So we have a proposer, we have a seconder. All those in favour of the uh, development? Thank you. So, uh, land to the rear, 35 Windermere Crescent uh, gets planning permission. Thank you unanimously. Next item, uh, Auckland Key. Through you, Chairman, this application follows a, a member's um, site visit to have a look at the front and back of the property a few weeks ago. The application uh, edged red highlights the application site. Um, so Auckland Key comes in through here. The back gardens of these properties um, have an outlook out over the harbour. The proposal before members is to enlarge some front dormers that we can see here. These are the existing dormers at the bottom of the image. And at the rear, the two rear dormers to be replaced by a single unified dormer with a roof terrace, extension here, extension here, and a ground floor extension across the entire width of the property. Members will note from this side elevation that the first floor is recessed. Um, that distance and the exposed ground floor is to be used as external decking. So if I show you members the floor plan, here we have the proposed ground floor and as I su suggest it's an entire rear width. First floor have the first floor elements recessed and there is access onto the roof terraces of the new single storey flat roof. We have privacy screens through the side on both flank elevations. Now what is not in the members' papers before them is a very recent appeal decision for this site that proposed exactly the same scheme as this but without the privacy screens. And that appeal was dismissed because of the impact on neighboring properties. So members, we are bringing this application to members with a recommendation for approval and in our view, the privacy screens down the flank, here and here, mitigate the overlooking to a satisfactory, satisfactory degree such that we are recommending the scheme for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Once again, we have two speakers for this, um, an objector and the applicant. Uh, Mr. Allen, if you're here, if you'd like to come forward. So a little grey button just at the bottom right hand corner of the speaker. When you're ready, that's not on. That, that, so, sorry, that's, that, you haven't pressed the right button. It's, it's, it's a it's grey blue button at the bottom left hand corner, bottom right hand corner, sorry. Yep. Can we swap with Councillor Chowdhury, please? <laughs> Councillor Chowdhury, if you wouldn't mind sharing with uh, Councillor Mayor. Yeah. So 
Sorry, are we ready now? Yes, we're ready. Okay. Good evening. As as has just been pointed out, actually, uh, actually, uh, well, in fact, I should start by saying I represent um, the owner of number nine, as well as myself at number seven, and the other people who have objected to the scheme for perhaps good reason, and it's up to you to decide. As your uh, planning officer has just pointed out, this application 171438 is actually identical to the scheme 171078 save, in my opinion, for the unwelcome addition of the six foot high opaque screens. They're totally out of keeping with the development and the design. They don't appear anywhere else. And in fact, were rejected when we actually applied for our own single story extension. The scheme has already been dismissed by the government on appeal and I can't see any reason why it shouldn't be again, even if it's allowed to go to appeal, which I'm not even sure that it is. Um, I can't understand why your officers have actually done a 180 degree U-turn and, and uh, recommended acceptance based on two screens when previously on design issues and other things they rejected the scheme. That, that's a bit of a mystery, but no doubt you can unravel that one. The use of the flat roofs as terraces has been denied both on number seven and number nine, and number nine as recently as last month. And the use is only allowed for maintenance access. I can't understand why suddenly these terraces would be allowed to have access on them. If they do, in fact, of course, I shall, I shall apply myself for access and number six will get upset. I have actually submitted some photographs because both the planning officers and, and indeed the appeals inspector seem to think that there's no overshadowing. I have actually issued photographs, one on the 8th of February, clearly showing that there is major problems with overshadowing, probably for something like four months of the year. And I, I find it hard to understand. I can only assume that people didn't visit first thing in the morning. And bear in mind that we have north, north of an east-west facing building. Somebody has raised the point that balconies on the eight houses opposite have been allowed, but I would just point out that they, had, they don't have any gardens, whereas, of course, we do. Um, I just, finally, just to sum up, I'd like to say that I think these extensions spoil the rhythm of the 15 houses that make up this Millwood, water, Millwood waterside development. It is overbearing. It is... Um, unnecessary development in my opinion and it affects not only the rhythm of the, the estate but in fact to be honest the rhythm of my life because it's going to adversely affect the way we use our property that's all I have to say thank you thank you If we could have the applicant, Mr. Baker, please. Once again, you have three minutes uh, when you're ready and press the grey button. There we go. I am Bernard Harry Baker, RIBA Chartered Architect and Director of Baker Architectural Limited. This is a householder application to a detached house for a number of small extensions plus a two-storey rear extension with balconies. The primary point of concern is the rear balconies. The first planning application was refused for one reason, direct overlooking. During the consultation process of the previous application, there were various revised proposals prepared, and these incorporated within the final drawings of the planning decision. The depth of the proposed ground floor extension is some 4.265 metres, and permitted development permits extensions up to four metres. The first floor extension has been reduced to 2.2 metres, just. 2.065 metres on the wings and permitted development under the GPDO 2015 permits 3 metres. The only point that requires planning permission to the rear extension is the balcony areas. One reason given for the refusal, previous refusal, direct overlooking. The scale, mass, bulk of the extension is fine with the case officer. The scale, mass and extension is fine with the external architectural consultant, Claire, Anna Clare. The scale and mass of the extension is fine with the planning inspector. The reasons considered by the inspector were massing, daylighting, overshadowing. The planning inspector referred to the council not raising concerns and did not give these as reasons to dismiss the appeal. 
The appeal decision states one reason for dismissing the previous appeal contained within five and six. It's the same reason in the planning decision, overlooking and loss of privacy. The current scheme with the privacy screens overcomes this issue. The existing property has a balcony which directly overlooks number nine. Therefore, the situation with the glaze screen will be an improvement. There are many glass balconies around the harbour and design reflects the mixed eclectic architectural style. The case officer report advises the scheme is designed to a high standard. Number seven and nine Auckland Quay have had extensions. Number nine has permission under 171259 for a 4.1 metre ground floor extension, just 165 millimetres less than the submitted scheme. The case officer recommendation is for approval with conditions. I feel none of the proposed conditions are onerous to my client and note the two informatives. Uh, the scheme has the backing of the case officer and if refused, I would concur as written in the report that a written representation is an appropriate way forward. My client purchased the property for the main reason of enjoying the view of the harbour and as the case officer reports, to maximise views of the harbour. Balconies with screens will allow her and her family to enjoy the view. Thank you. Thank you very much. There we go. Yep. Okay, just to clarify why this has come back to um, planning again is because the, the last time it was refused purely on the basis of overlooking, um, the screens are now mitigating that, which is now the reason why it's come back so it's the same design but we've got the screens in place which now um, um, keeps the um, planning inspector uh, happier. Councillor Metcalf. Thank you Mr Chairman. <coughs> got a couple of uh, concerns on the, on the property of which obviously I do know quite well it is on the other side of North Harbour from where I live. One of them is, um, I note that there are no other extensions in that area that have uh, any further than the single story. Would this be setting a precedent to have an upper floor as, as an extension? That's, that's one concern. And the other concern is I note a flat roof is um, led off of the balcony on the top floor that flat roof could be used as a sun terrace. Although it hasn't got a, any uh, balcony around the edge, it could soon be put there, and I think that would become a concern, particularly to the neighbours um, of, of Auckland Quay. Uh, just those two concerns, Mr Chair. Thank you. Mr Palmer? Through, through you, Chairman, just by way of clarification, uh, this central part of the development through here is a roof terrace. That's a positive proposal by the applicant with some French doors in here. The view and opinion around overlooking is that the gable ends through here mitigate the oblique views down into neighbouring plots. Views will be afforded directly out over rear garden into the harbour, same way that they do from the first floor rear windows. In terms of setting a precedent um, uh, around first floor extensions, um, in some regards, yes, it would be the first out of the blocks, but as members will be aware, that doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. We have considered the merits of the scheme and considered the architectural merits in this instance, um, set an appropriate standard of design, layout and accommodation, and as the speaker mentioned, and I will echo here, that the appeal inspector did not make any negative commentary around the scale, mass and design of the development, only how that development impacted on neighbour in terms of direct overlooking. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, just a quick point, the, the, the fact that it might set a precedent isn't a material concern. Um, each application is taken on its own merits. So we're looking at this application and this application only and not worrying about what might, might not come in the future. Thank you. Councillor Robertson. Thank you, Chair. Just a question. Um, it was one of the speakers noted that um, houses on either side had balconies that they had 
no planning permission to use. Is there a particular reason for that? Or? Again, through you, Chairman, the neighbouring properties apply for single storey extensions, and we put a positive condition on that on those um, extensions, saying that any development of that flat roof requires a further consent, with the mindset that if they had a positive choice to use that as an external amenity area, then mitigation would have to come into play. The same way as we're looking at here, then with some privacy screens down the flank, then it may well be considered to be appropriate. To have unfettered use of the single storey flat roof extensions, as outlined by the appeal inspector, was found to be unacceptable, and that's why we sought those controls on the single storey extensions. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Taylor. Mr Chairman, I think sometimes this is a, a situation where um, it's obviously been refused in the past, some time ago, I can't remember now, but, um, uh, and the inspector came along and had a look and he's uh, brought out that it's only uh, the reasons overlooking. Maybe this was a case where there weren't enough reasons for refusal last time for the inspector to look at and the main reason we had was the overlooking I quite like I have to admit I quite like the development I he may be the first of those ones but I think it's very ambitious and uh, and, and I, I again I can see no real reason even even though it has a, a, a sun terrace there that comes out it, it, you wouldn't be able to overlook on 20 body it wouldn't uh, wouldn't personally affect anybody, uh, any of the neighbours. So it may not be uh, a popular development because it is quite large, but that's not what the building inspector uh, considered, and he was only worried about the overlooking, as we should be worried. And that's been uh, answered by having the screen on the side. Uh, and so I, uh, Mr Chairman, have no uh, reason for refusal, but... Thank you. And uh, as I mentioned last week, the government is trying to encourage people to expand on their properties and things and has um, taken away some of the restrictions that we used to have as a planning committee. And uh, now there's a lot more permitted developments that um, we don't have an awful lot of control over, uh, which can be very frustrating when we're dealing with local, local issues. Um, but um, Councillor Mia. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, uh, that flat roof, um, I'm going to go back to it. Um, first of all, is there any, uh, because I could see it's just a plane, is there any barriers going to be there? Because we know in future this is the idea that people will come out to the backyard and obviously on the, on the first floor. So can I ask this question? Is there going to be any restriction on that, first of all, please? Mr. Palmer? Sorry. The upper terrace uh, located um, here is accessed from the central position here. The views are directly out over the rear garden and down to the harbour. The gable ends of the first floor new extensions provide adequate privacy looking this way and looking that way. So the neighbours will have their gardens protected by the upper floor extension. So in elevation terms, just bear with me, the terrace is sited in here and this gable end and this gable end mitigate the direct overlooking. We have a privacy screen down here and a privacy screen down here for the roof terraces at single storey level. Hope that clarifies the situation. Thank you, officer. Um, yeah, uh, as Councillor um, Taylor has said, that um, it's to me it is a first development I could see on that particular area, but um, I don't see any problem with any other um, uh, problems. But the only worries were that in future I'm sure that they will uh, get people out to the backyard and obviously not yard, but that's the first floor. Um, but uh, I personally would like to see uh, some kind of barrier or some kind of railings or something on the first floor um, 
uh, thing if there is any possibility. Otherwise, I haven't got anything against it. Thank you. There is a handrail in between the two roofs, two, two pitched roofs, which is shown on a drawing just there. That would be that would be a minimum of a metre high. Thank you, Chair. Interesting how different a proposal looks on a drawing and when we do a site visit. Um, the interesting thing was when I done the site visit was really the depth it comes out in the back garden, which really, if you look there, there's that line which is the slope, which is quite a, a slope down to the area to the harbour, but the extension comes out to about that slope. Um, at the time, as you look at it, you think, wow, that is a single story, you know, lots of people will have a single story extension now. I know it's slightly over, but yeah, as I say, um, these houses haven't really been developed yet, but it's, as you say, there's always going to be a first for the future. Um, yeah, it was the windows concerning me, but now the obscure glass they're going to put on either side is something that's now, you know, cancelling out the overlooking, which is good. And I was concerned about the second floor proposal of the flat roof, but as you say, with the gables, it also is a, um, stopping that overlooking, you know, on both sides of the property. So at the end of the day, I was concerned about the size, but now um, um, with different items, with different things, and when you look next door at number seven, it still protrudes quite a way down their garden. Um, yeah, it, it's an application that was difficult to assess when we first saw it. But after doing a site visit, it, it does open up to what they're looking at. And I can understand with the, the overlooking or the overbearing, but with a single story, mainly the big extension is on the ground floor. I can't see any issues with this application now. Thank you. Who would like to... Councillor Taylor. Point, yes. Point clarification, because it looks like that balustrade, and you mentioned about a metre high. Can I say under health and safety that it's not high enough? Uh, don't know whether that applies to this, the officers. Through you, Chairman, it will be a building regs requirement to make sure it is um, at least 1.1 metres uh, below finished uh, roof level. Uh, in Under here, this is a slightly recessed roof that you'll be standing on, so the roof through here and the balustrade will give a minimum uh, requirement for protection under the building regs. Sorry, Mr. Councillor Taylor, I was uh, taking a guess. Um, anyone would like to move? Councillor Mia? Would like to second? Councillor Taylor? Oh, Councillor, Councillor Coles to second. So, Councillor Mia is moving, Councillor Coles is seconding. All those in favour of the de development, please raise. So, that's unanimously approved for the extension on the back of Auckland, uh, sorry, 8 Auckland Quay. Thank you. Um, I didn't give anybody a chance to escape last time, so if anybody would like to leave now, please, please do so. Thank you, Chairman. Next item, I believe, is one Matlock Road. Um, the area is edge red is the application site and property. The application location is this hatched building here. So you access the building up a shared drive in here to a semi-private uh, open space. So here's the structure, and it's a very utilitarian um, appearance. That utilitarian appearance has um, reach the end of its beneficial life and the applicant is looking to replace the existing building which is the sketch here with a really built structure that's the bottom image such that the accommodation can change from utility room and storage to one that performs more of a re incidental residential use connected with the main property the incidental residential use is not wholeheartedly um, mentioned in the application uh, it could be any other incidental use so it could be a games room it could be um, a home office 
It could be a kid's playroom. All of those are deemed to be incidental to the enjoyment of the dwelling house. We as officers find that the redevelopment of the building in this location out onto the semi-public uh, area is not harmful to the character of the broader area and the design and appearance of what is to be replaced is entirely appropriate in our view and we are recommending the scheme for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. We have one speaker on this one, um, Rebecca Riddell, if you'd like to come forward. We can't take any photographs at this point, I'm afraid. They have to be presented beforehand. Sorry. We've all been out and, and, and done a site visit, so... When you're ready, if you press the grey button for me. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Rebecca Medell. I am the planning advisor for the Meads Community Association. I am here to support the application to renovate the Lean 2 building in the Garden of One Matlock, Drove, uh, Matlock Road in order to create, create a garden room. The applicant, whose family has owned the property for over 20 years, accessed their garden via staircase or via the a, uh, via the lane to the side of the property. The applicant has recently restored the, sh the listed shepherd's lookout to a very high standard such that it was praised by conservation. This application is to renovate the lean-to to a similar high standard. The small building will be faced with natural wood, allowing it to mellow with, uh, to soft silver, and the paintwork will mirror that of the listed building. The plastic roof will also be replaced by traditional tarred roof. Despite being partially overlooked by several properties, it is interesting that there have been no objections bar the one from the owner of Matlock Barn. This is somewhat ironic as there is virtually no visual impact on the objector as the property is divided by a 12-foot high wall. The objector has also expressed concerns about the unadopted lane shared with the applicant. I would like to point out that the applicant has a legal document drawn up by the previous owner in 1996 confirming the established right of way over the past 50 years. The applicant would like to reassure the owner of Matlock Barn that they will keep the builder's activity in the lane to a minimum and respect the, will respect the conditions imposed by the Eastbourne Borough Council. As I see this application as nothing but a great improvement to the conservation area, I would like to support the officer's recommendation and ask the, the committee to approve this application. Thank you. Thank you. Who would like to start? Councillor Taylor. Your patch. Um, in fact, I called this chairman because oh was that going to be turned on Rebecca should um, because um, the uh, resident at the back was concerned that there would be a possibility of being used for commercial use. Now, that's not the case, because now uh, I believe uh, condition number five says that it cannot be used, uh, development shall not be used for uh, any other commercial use, which uh, I think satisfies her. Can I say that the objector, or no, the resident there, never actually objected to what the proposals were. She was concerned about and it doesn't, it doesn't really clearly show the, uh, the possible sewer extension going into a sewer that runs down her driveway. Uh, and I believe the officer will confirm afterwards that I believe in the report it says that's subject to another application, of which I've assured her for that. Uh, and so in actual fact, uh, I too, along with um, uh, Mrs. Medell, I'm quite happy with the application. 
She did mention, it's interesting because she did mention the gazebo, I think she called it a shepherd's. Uh, and at the present moment, I was round there today actually and had a quick look. Uh, and I do strongly, Mr. Chairman, and I shouldn't do that, urge the residents that have made a good job of uh, refurbishing it that at least the drainage water from the roof doesn't have to be discharged over the uh, property of the lady in the barn. Um, I believe the conservation area officer uh, is quite happy with that being discharged within their own property, which is where it should be, but at the present moment it has a, a section of guttering missing and is discharged, the surface water is discharged over the neighbour's garden. Uh, and I'm not, this, this committee isn't here to, to uh, consider neighbour disputes, but I just thought I'd uh, perhaps mention it as Councillor, uh, as Mrs. Murdell <laughs> is uh, here uh, today, and maybe she'd have a little look and uh, perhaps persuade the applicant that they could uh, tidy up the guttering on that. Other than that, I think, providing uh, it's not used for commercial use, I think the neighbour would be quite happy. Thank you, Mr Chairman, for your patience. Thank you. I've got a little nod from uh, Mrs Medell there. So, Councillor Coles. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Um, I, too, went and had a look at the place on um, Saturday, and I thought <coughs> what a great improvement it would be. Um, if I was the owner of that property, I would be very pleased to see the change and uh, um, providing any uh, extra conditions are taken care of. I see no reason why it shouldn't go ahead. Thank you. Councillor Mayor? Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, um, former councillor and the chair of the planning here um, who has presented today's um, this application and I, I personally agree with um, everything that's been already said and actually when I went there uh, councillor Taylor has already mentioned about that little uh, waterways too um, yeah I feel that but as he also mentioned that it is not our it's a neighboring dispute which I'm not going to say anything about it but I would uh, humbly request um, uh, Mrs. Madell to um, to look at this personally if she can and sort something out if that can be possible otherwise personally I think it's a great development and it's wonderful to see things are moving on and I'm quite happy to move that if you know, when it's time there. Thank you. Thank you. I'll give Mr. Taylor the opportunity to move if you'd like to. Are you happy for Mayor to move? Are you happy to second? Yep. So Councillor Mayor is moving. Councillor Taylor is seconding. Um, all those in favour of the development, please raise. So unanimously approved for the extension at, eight Matlock, sorry, at Matlock Road. Thank you. Um, we're going to take a very short recess if anybody wants to.
Moving on to item number nine, which is uh, Terminus Road. Thank you, Chairman. The application site uh, for members just to locate themselves is the former post office building at Terminus Road. Members will know um, the site. This end of Terminus Road goes into Langley Road through here. The elevation is seen on this image here. It's been vacant for 12 months plus. This is the transition from um, key primary shopping frontage to more of a secondary location as we go down uh, Langley Road. The reason it's coming to planning committee is that the change of use of the ground floor of the property breaches a fairly old planning policy. I say fairly old because it seeks to retain um, a predominance of A1 retail, but that plan was formulated bef significantly before the Arndale extension was not necessarily thought of, but certainly before it became um, being constructed. So our view, as articulated in the officer's report, is that as this is right at the end of the primary shopping frontage, and that we have a new heart to the town centre that is the uh, Arndale extension, that we can begin to look at an alternative uses other than pure retail. The application before members is the change of use to A3, A5. Members may note who the applicant is and are. Members also should inform themselves that we can't control that occupier occupying the building. So my advice to planning committee members, it is the change of use to A3, A5. The operator shouldn't necessarily um, be persuasive to members, apart from the issue around it being potentially a national operator. A national operator will have high standards in terms of uh, litter, in terms of cleanliness of their establishment, in terms of um, part-time, full-time FTEs and in-house training regimes. So our advice to planning committee members is that whilst this, there is a modest breach of our planning policy, in this instance it is considered to be an acceptable proposal. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Who would like first? Anybody? <laughs> Councillor no. Taylor, I was just about no, to step okay. in there. I've, it is a breach of uh, planning policy, uh, but um, if the officers uh, fitness, it's very ambitious and huge, huge. I, I, I do apologise, Mr. Taylor. We, we do have a, a speaker for this. Oh, okay. My apologies, um, Mr. Daly, who's the applicant. <laughs> I do apologise. Okay, when you're ready, we have three okay. minutes. Uh, good evening, members. My name is Patrick Daly of DPP Planning, and I'm the agent for this application. I kindly ask you to turn to the addendum note, which was forwarded yesterday evening, and provide some more comprehensive overview of the proposals. Firstly, in terms of background, my client currently operates from an existing unit on Langney Road. Uh, with this lease set to expire, an opportunity has arisen to relocate to the former post office unit on Terminus Road, which is currently empty. We note that the requirements of policy TC4 uh, state that there should, be, uh, should only be a maximum of 25% non f one frontage within the primary retail area, but we believe a more pragmatic and holistic approach should be taken, and this has uh, been agreed by your officers, and the application has been recommended for approval for the reasons I now set out. The new Arndale Centre includes a large provision of A1 floor space, most of which has been pre-let and, and on completion later this year will increase the proportion of A1 frontage above the 75% threshold as set out in policy TC4, even with our proposals being implemented. The general health of Eastbourne Town Centre is very good, with a low vacancy rate of 7%, below the national average of 11%, and when assessing units on the uh, over over three quarters are in A1 use, with only 8.4% being A3, A4 or A5 use. This market confidence is reinforced by the Western extension, extension of the Arndale Centre. The large units around the site are Blacks, Edinburgh Woolen Mill, Marks and Spencer and Debenhams, and suggest that this part of the town centre is also very healthy. 
The relocation of my client's operations would have a limited impact on the vibrancy and vitality in this area as visitors will continue to shop here. The new Arndale Centre will inevitably shift the gravity of retailing and shoppers westwards, reducing footfall in the eastern part of the town centre to the detriment of businesses in this location. The proposals for a well-established and popular restaurant will help readdress this balance, attracting footfall to support local businesses. We note that there are some comments uh, have been made by local residents regarding the late night noise and disturbance. We would like to assure members that our clients recognise business model is to close at 11pm as this is the case at the existing establishment on Langley Road. The late night disturbances have, that have attracted comments are likely in part due to other businesses in the area that open later into the evening beyond 12 midnight. Overall the proposals simply involve the relocation of an established business in East Bourne Town Centre, which is currently considered very healthy as reinforced by the investment of the new Arndale Centre. The relocation of the unit to the eastern portion, portion of the primary retail area will help maintain the balance of, of retailing once the new Arndale extension is open and attract the majority of shoppers with its a, large A1 units. I trust that members will understand these distinctive circumstances and endorse the recommendation of your officers so that consent is granted. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Councillor Taylor. I did read the communications last night. Oh, that, that was sent. And uh, can I say, I think it's. I think that corner there is always pretty awful, quite frankly. And if we go there, what are those red things in there? One may be a post box. What's the? I mean. The whole corner there, I hope this development brightens that whole area up. I'm not sure about the, the wheelie bins, but it's always been a bit, a bit messy there. And I think with this application, perhaps they'll take on the task of tidying up all that corner because it could look really good going into Langley Road. So um, it, it's, it's going to be, you know, I think, beneficial to the town without a doubt. Move approval, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Um, the round one's a post box. The, uh, the square one is a business post box. I'll have a word with the PA for me. <laughs> that whole area is getting redeveloped after the, the, um, after the Arndale Centre has been finished, completed. So I, I wouldn't know. That would be down to the next client. <laughs> uh, Councillor Mayor. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, as I could see, uh, the uh, opening hours, first of all, uh, which is 11 to 2300 hours, which is quite good reasonable time, because um, Domino's next door, which will be, which is quite late open, I've seen. Um, although this corner has gone down a bit dark, really, and I personally think it's going to be a good idea, but um, Councillor Taylor has already asked this um, bins, which looks there. Now, especially through the night, I've seen all the students when they come into clubs, obviously they make a mess on this corner here. Basically, because there was a, a, a cash machine around there, they used to always they make a bit of a mess and get all the cans in their hand and throwing everywhere around. Um, I don't know what can be done about that, but that is not my concern. I know it's a breach of uh, condition somewhere here, but it's been accepted by the office. Um, so, um, personally, uh, I personally would certainly say that it's going to brighten this corner up, which is, I think it's a good idea. So, hopefully, if my colleagues, they agree with it, then I would, I would rather um, go for the officer's recommendation with the conditions, and especially with the bins. Thank you very much. Th thank you, Chairman. Through, through you, um, just to clarify the, the, the bin issue that a couple of councillors have mentioned, the gate is on here for uh, antisocial behaviour issues at the instruction of the police. Members will note that the uh, scheme has a bin enclosure to the rear of the plot. Here's the front onto Terminus Road. Here's the gates roughly in this position here. And it will be under the stewardship of the operator to bring the bins to a recessed location away from public view so that they will only be out for collection and be replaced post-collection. In terms of the front elevation and making a material change to this part of town, I echo that sentiment. Members will be mindful of the advertisement that will follow any change of use. That advertisement 
um, will fall under the advertisement regs, and if we have control, then we will impose the appropriate control. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Murdoch. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> anyway, um, no, I actually think this is a good proposal. Um, we're bringing here somewhere where it's actually sit down to eat. Most places within this area are always takeaway. I know they offer the same, but to have somewhere where you can sit down as well as eat brings footfall to stay, not just to move on, which I think will be really good for this area. I know we have bills just around the corner, but that's about it. And lots of coffee shops, but to be able to sit down to eat, I think is good. So yes, um, I fully approve of this application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Robinson. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, I like the fellow colleagues. I think it's going to improve the area. Um, a building's been lying empty for a long time, so I'm quite happy with the change of use. Um, okay, thank you. Lovely. We already have Councillor Taylor who's moved to approve. Who would like to second? Yeah, Councillor, Councillor Robinson. Robinson. All those in favour of change of use, please raise. So unanimously approved for the change of use for 141, 145 Terminus Road. Thank you. Um, next item is item 33, Netherfield Avenue. Thank you, Chairman. This application relates to modifications to a previously approved single storey extension. Uh, here we have some images of the application site and the back-to-back -back relationship between uh, its neighbours. Here we have the existing property prior to the extension being formed. Members will note a conservatory and raised uh, patio through here. Here's some photos pre-extension. So we have um, a elevated steps up to finish floor level for the conservatory and a, and a modest uh, raised patio area. So here we see, again, the existing situation. What has been consented to and what has been approved is a single-storey extension that brings the conservatory, essentially the conservatory rear wall that we can see here, out to broadly this position through here. And the application before members is to have a safe transition zone from this patio door down to garden level. So here's the uh, former extension, and here we have in this image here the landing from the patio doors, a flight of steps down to garden level. See on the reverse image over here, the landing area is simply a landing area from the patio door down a flight of stairs to garden. Officers consider that the degree of overlooking that results from this element of the proposal. This element of the proposal at the rear is the steps and landing. At the front is a modest porch that is um, acceptable in broad planning terms. Any issues around overlooking from the platform and steps, in our view, is comparable to the overlooking that exists from the approved patio door. Chairman, we are recommending the scheme for approval. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, one objector, Mr Curtis. Uh, when you're ready, press the grey button and off you go. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Uh, my name is Stephen Curtis. I live at number 38 Golding Road and I'm speaking on behalf of my wife and our neighbours, Mr and Mrs Axel at number 34, Mr and Mrs Slidell at number 36 and Mrs Freeman at number 40. Our issues are privacy and drainage. I'm sure you've all seen this sheet. Substantial trees in the applicant's back gardens provided mutual privacy until he removed them last year when he built his extension. Because of errors which occurred at the planning department at that time, a two metre fence of the one metre trellis is to be built at council taxpayers expense on the instructions of the leader of the council, David Tutt. This fence will not be as high as the trees and is a compromise, so will be totally ineffective against the new platform. Mr Chairman, 
You know me as a photographer. If I were to shoot to make you seem even more important, I would adopt a low viewpoint to make you look taller. Then to make you appear bigger and more imposing and dominant, I would get closer to you. Um, it's, it's perspective. It's about viewpoint. Our viewpoint in Golding Road is like that. This platform will appear as nearer and higher to us than the uh, patio doors appear and will give the opportunity to view across the new fence into our homes and gardens. Mutual privacy was not previously a problem at numbers 40 and 34 Golding Road, but the building of that extension has now made this new proposal an issue for them, especially at number 34, but neither were sent consultation letters. The new fence will be of little or no benefit to them. Now flooding. Um, please see this sheet. As is obvious, water drains into our gardens down the slope from the old Isle of Langney, both on the surface and within the soil. The stream at the bottom of our gardens was put into a pipe, but this is not effective, so in the winter the gardens can get boggy. The effect of building anything in this garden is akin to putting your foot onto a wet but very sturdy sponge, especially with the unstable and unknown nature of the infill. Any building must have suitable foundations and drainage solutions. Simply dumping hardcore in concrete creates problems. The proposed patio is on a slope, so will have to be a significant structure. And there is already another huge terrace under construction at the end of the applicant's garden. So inevitably, there will be drainage issues could, which could well lead to localised flooding. Um, <clears throat> just so you know, I wasn't always a photographer. I did start training as a consulting civil engineer, where you turn architect's dream into structure structures that work um, and spent an awful long time on building sites also had a few years at the British Geological Survey on behalf of all the objectors I would say we cannot do anything about the status quo but please don't make it any worse we ask you con to consider that Councillor Tutt has done his best to sort out the mistakes of the planning department by providing this expensive fence but by granting this application much of its benefit will be removed on the drainage and flooding potential we have made our case in public to the best of our knowledge and understanding standing and it is now firmly on record thank you thank you uh, there are a couple of issues there I don't know if you want to just tidy them up for us Mr Palmer first can I get you to turn your microphone off please Where does he leave? for clarification purposes the issue around the new fence is um, one through this position through here. The back-to-back -back distance from the end of the extension to the back of the properties over here is in the region between 23 and 25 metres. Yes, there is a significant change of levels uh, down, and I echo the concerns of the speaker in terms of ensuring that any structure is sound in relation to the local geology. As members will be aware, the construction of extensions and outbuildings, if they have control, are controlled under the building regulations. Uh, similarly, the issue or the requirement for a platform from this level down into the garden is not a planning requirement. It's a requirement of the building regulations. If that door is going to open, then building regulations require a safe landing uh, down into the garden. So it, it's competing and complementary legislation where building control are requiring the imposition of a transition zone down to the garden and planning officers have heard that request and advised the applicant to keep the new landing or the proposed landing as small as practically possible to mitigate the degree of overlooking. I understand the frustrations of the speaker who formerly had a large hedge to provide uh, significant privacy. That hedge was not under the control of the speaker and all the neighbours. The applicant was quite within their rights. Not having a TPO tree preservation order on that hedge was quite within their right to remove it that may have implications in terms of opening up the rear of this property. The extension that was consented to is marginally over what one could build without requiring planning permission. We have consented to that extension. That extension has been revisited, measured, and in accordance with the approved drawings. The application before members 
is not to debate the overlooking from the extension because that's pre-consented. It is to assess solely the transition platform and steps down to the garden. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Councillor, T Councillor Taylor, Councillor Murdoch, Councillor Taylor. You know what, I, Mr Chairman, I fully sympathise with the objectors of that. And there is nothing you can do about that patio uh, door there, but the steps uh, and, and the patio bit coming out will aggravate the situation without doubt. Now, we've, there's been spoken about a fence being put up at the expense of Eastbourne Borough Council, is that? No? Previous view to the Golden Road prior to council funding fence being erected. Is that right? Can we, can we clarify yeah. that? Chairman, for, for clarification, the, the, the fence is not part of this application. The fence is a matter that has been discussed and resolved outside of this forum and outside of the debate of the merits of this scheme. The fence is a mechanism whereby, um, with the assistance of the leader of the council, whereby the degree of overlooking from that patio door will be mitigated to some degree. Thank you, Chairman. Right. Can I just carry, carry on? Yeah. And the other one was, uh, I know it's a condition here, the uh, surface water disposal, so that has to be sorted out before the planning goes ahead, before or within, within the officer's uh, uh, anticipation of what that what will done, be done with the surface water so that will be done can, is there another condition that we can add there where this development does not go ahead unless there's this fence that's been talked about to replace the uh, I assume that's a, a Leylandi hedge that was there and obviously a lot of people don't like them but it, it, the impact that's been created by removing that hedge on other neighbours quite frankly, it is horrendous. And I think uh, neighbours, when they build these uh, extensions, don't respect the privacy of other people's back gardens. Uh, and that's what's happened here. That can't be uh, changed now in some ways, and we're only looking at uh, a, a small uh, a balcony to go down. Um, but can that be, uh, Mr. Chairman, can that be a condition that we, <coughs> nothing goes ahead at all until this fence is put up uh, to mitigate the overlooking? I would have to. Through, through, through you, Chairman, if, if members are minded that the only way the scheme is acceptable in any form is by having the pre-existing mitigation, then they can inform themselves that such a condition would be appropriate. My advice is that the matters are separate and independent from each other. The transaction is a financial transaction between um, the council and a third party. There's no guarantee that that third party will uh, deliver on that transaction such that if there was that condition, the applicant would not be able to implement the terrace because the fence construction would be outside of their control. Thank you. Thank you. Did you, are you happy with that response, Mr. Taylor, Councillor Taylor? No, not really. I think really, uh, in my view, we should really be looking at uh, either deferring until this is done or refusing the application until the, the, fut the future's seen that these uh, residents are not overlooked as, as much as they are. I, I could express myself, for, I'm quite angry actually about, uh, about this and the fact that um, it, it's fairly obvious that it's, uh, it's really a huge intrusion on people's back gardens there from those photographs that we see. And, uh, uh, and I, I'd, I'd move refusal, Mr Chairman. It might upset everybody, but I just don't think it's, it's right. Chairman, uh, through you, um, clearly the planning department can't, well, they can control uh, tree removal by way of the imposition of a tree preservation order. I trust members wouldn't support us uh, serving TPOs on Lelandi hedges. 
notwithstanding that, I think the councillor is appropriate in inviting officers to seek a deferment um, and we can bring the case back to planning committee post the erection of the privacy fence. We can certainly do that. The applicant may choose to appeal on non-determination. That's in their gift. They may choose to um, encourage the implementation of the fence as a matter of urgency. And as soon as the fence is erected, we can bring the matter back to planning committee. Thank you. Okay, so we've got a, a, a move to defer. Anyone like to second? Councillor Coles. Um, the removal of the trees was obviously within the, um, the gift of the person who wants to have the extension. Um, but presumably, they must also be aware of the fact that their own privacy will now be exposed because if they couldn't see beyond the trees, and neither could the people on the other side. Now they'll both be able to see one another. It's just a comment. Yes. Quite happy to, 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 to second as well. Okay. Okay, so we've, we've got a recommendation to defer. Councillor Taylor's proposed. Councillor Coles is happy to second. So all those in favour of deferment, please raise. Unanimously deferred. So we will ask for the fence to be f installed before it comes back to planning again. Yes? Thank you. Okay, Mr. Palmer. Thank you, Chairman. Next item, 85 Royal, the parade, uh, the Langston, Langton's guest house. Here we have the, the building. So it's one half of a semi-detached property. Members will know this uh, guest house being opposite the Redoubt uh, Fortress. Here we have a close-up image. So the application site is on the right-hand side. It's part of a mirrored front conservatory. Uh, both conservatories formed historically in timber. That timber has uh, suffered um, given its location in a very prominent location. The application before members is to remove the timber conservatory to be replaced in UPVC. Officers have negotiated significantly with the owners of this establishment to get a close as practically possible to the existing uh, timber form. And we can see on the left-hand image 
the, the image we can see of the sample panel aligned with the former panel. It's not an identical uh, match, but it's as close as you can form in modern plastic construction. Mem officers appreciate uh, the issue about the symmetry of the scheme. The symmetry will be broken to some degree um, by the new proposal. We feel that given the fact that every other guest house along this stretch has pre-existing plastic um, front conservatories, there are larger hotels along the seafront. I'm minded to remind members of the East Beach Hotel by way of example, where we are looking very strongly to replace certain elements of that building facade with a more traditional material. In this location, given the character has already been formed by small guest houses with very um, discreet plastic conservatories, we are minded to recommend this to members uh, with officers' support. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. We have uh, one speaker who's the applicant for this, uh, Mrs. Cheetah. small but grey button on the bottom right hand corner, press that and when you're ready start speaking. Thank you. Karen Cheat of the Langton's Guest House. We have made this planning application because the conservatory at the entrance of our guest house on the front here in Eastbourne is leaking cold and rotten. Despite our best efforts to replace sections of wood and regular general upkeep, it is no longer fit for purpose and we, were, we are fighting an expensive losing battle with all that nature throws at it. We cannot use it for breakfast service during several months of the year, meaning that we have to close two of our guest rooms, thus losing the income they could provide. For a large part of the year, our guests cannot sit in the conservatory and enjoy Eastbourne Seafront with a cup of tea or a glass of wine. It is just too cold and it makes the rest of the house cold, thus increasing our heating bills. We work very hard to maintain high standards at the Langtons to give our guests the best possible stay with us. But unfortunately, online reviews mention the cold, leaky and uninviting conservatory. Negative reviews can, of course, impact hugely on bookings in this competitive market. The conservatory was only added to the front of the property in 1992. However, the design is very much in keeping with the rest of our lovely Victorian property. Being on the seafront in Eastbourne and in the conservation area, we acknowledge the sensitive nature of this application. However, the cost of replacing the conservatory in wood is just too expensive. We therefore want to replace it in the same design, but in environmentally friendly, up-to-date materials. During the process of making this application, we have been extremely grateful for all the advice and input from Councillor Murray and the conservation officer, who both attended site meetings, as well as the planning officer and the conservation committee. Our local window manufacturers and installers were especially helpful in producing and bringing to site an example profile to the exact specifications to show the planning officer. All of this advice and assistance has helped us to ensure that the proposed replacement conservatory replicates the current profile and design as closely as possible. The planning officer, as well as the conservation committee and conservation officer, have all indicated their approval in principle, and we would be very grateful if you would look favourably on our application. Thank you. Thank you. Who would like to start? <laughs> Councillor Murdoch. Thank you, Chair. Well, I can totally understand the applicant's concerns. I mean... Um, a way forward, she's trying to run a small business, you're trying to draw customers, you know, and as you say, when you get reports of drafty and damp places where you may have breakfast, totally understand. But looking at this as a building, yes, um, they've got to go the way forward, perhaps UBPC, um, UBPC is the way forward. Hardwood is much desirable, but so expensive now. Um, yeah, and they're forever, I can imagine, with the softwood that these were built from, filling, painting, filling, painting, and it just doesn't work in the end. 
Okay? Thank you. So, yes, um, as I say, totally understand the applicant's concerns, so would definitely be in agreement with this. It is only, you know, a small guest house, and as you say, there's a lot of other smallish guest houses along here that have had to go the same way. Um, yep, um, other than that, it's totally in keeping with what they've got. They've tried their best to, to mirror image what they have, and it wouldn't surprise me if next door goes the same way later on in the future. So, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Taylor. Thank you, Councillor Mia. Is the next door already done? Just out of curiosity. All right. Can I? Can I first of all say, uh, you know, I have a bee in my bonnet about uh, 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 plastic windows. But can I, can I thank the applicants for coming along and working with our officers to try and replicate something that will, will you know, look good on the front. Most of these houses didn't have conservatories when they were first built. It's sad because I looked and obviously the upper windows are already uh, plastic, which is unfortunate because that actually devalues the property as a property. But nevertheless, I think it's very, very important that when people want to change the windows, that they work with the officers. In actual fact, the upstairs windows uh, are not very attractive as far as a Victorian house goes because, believe you me, they do replica um, sash cord windows that would be much better than that. But if they're happy with that, that's okay. Uh, but as far as the conservatory is concerned, they're working with the officers uh, and I hope it works out for them, but I must say, Mr. Chairman, please, please, any applicants should make sure they come and, uh, and have a word with our conservation officer and the officers to see whether they can uh, put in something that is actually appropriate. Thank you. I'm, well, Councillor Murdoch may move for approval, but I'm quite happy to. Councillor Taylor, yes, I think you made a couple of valid points there. Uh, this applicant has, has gone through all the right channels. They've approached the officers, they've approached myself, they've approached the conservation um, uh, group to seek their um, guidance on what should be done. And they've done, gone right out of their way to get a really good quality um, plastic window, UPVC window. I notice um, that, that some of the detailing that they've got, like, the panels at the bottom are nice raised and fielded panels, uh, which are much more expensive than just the flat ones. So they've really gone over and above to make sure that they've complied with everything that we've suggested. Um, and once again, I defer back to our, 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 our statement that uh, each application needs to be taken on its own merit, and we will do that in the case of everything along the seafront. But we, we also have listened to the hoteliers, um, and uh, where we can, we are doing all that we can to support them and make their life e as easy as possible. Councillor Mayor. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think most of the stuff already been said by Councillor Taylor and Councillor Murdoch. Um, yes, um, I personally uh, always like to see the wooden uh, frames, all those Victorians I always like, but unfortunately we we'll have to cooperate with the time, how the things are developing and our seafront needs to be developed. And I personally would like to appreciate the, the, uh, the applicant who has came and spoke. And it is very nice to see that we all work together, the officers, the applicant, the councillors. We are all trying to help each other. And everything possible, it can be done. And it is, you know, it, this is how we are looking at everything. And we always put our personal opinions, not to look at like, oh, we're going to support this, or we, we aren't going to support that. That's not the way it works. It works as a team. And as the applicant has already uh, gone through with all the offices and things, it is very much greatly appreciated that, you know, these are the way we'd like to work together so things can be moved on and we can improve and the vision of the town. So I personally am really for it. So I wouldn't mind whoever um, uh, proposed that. Thank you. Councillor Coles. Thank you very much. I'd, I'd just like to say that um, although the, I was surprised to learn that the conservatory uh, at the front was a fairly recent acquisition, um, it adds to the property, it, it actually looks charming and um, the applicants are obviously want to keep it, are looking as much as possible as it is now, 
but they have to have these um, financial considerations as well. So I'm very happy to support this application and uh, enable them as part of the hospitality uh, people here in Eastbourne to go forward with their business. Thank you. So, Councillor Murdoch, would you like to move approval? Uh, Councillor Mayor, second. So, um, all those in favour of the um, adaption, please raise. So, unanimously approved for the conservatory to be replaced. Thank you. Next item is item 12. Sorry. Um, Yes, corporate lodge, yeah. No, no. King's Drive, sorry. King's Drive's next. <laughs> do you want to do corporate lodge first, if you're waiting for that one? <laughs> corporate lodge first. Thank you, Chairman. Corporate lodge, uh, Edge read on the plan before members. The rear garden of corporate lodge forms the application site, so we're in this location through, through here. The proposal before members is to um, excavate, and I do say excavate because it's at a slightly higher level than the roadway, excavate a, the back garden to form a bungalow. The bungalow has access to a pull-in car park space, a very modest um, garden courtyard area to the front and side. The roof lights look out to the front and also to the rear. There is no overlooking from the rear um, roof lights. I'll come on to show you that in a moment. So here we have Carbert Lodge property. Here we have their back garden. And currently, broadly, the back gardens of Carbrook and its uh, existing neighbour is uniform. So the proposal is to drop an element of the back garden to sink the building to reduce its scale and bulk impact on uh, adjoining neighbouring plots. I mentioned previously that the rear dormer will, sorry, the rear roof light will not cause any overlooking. So here we have the existing boundary treatment to Mulberry Cottage and their garden level. So the rear roof light will look out on that fence and skyward. The front roof light will look to the street. Chairman, we consider this to be an appropriate form of development in this uh, suburban location. There are issues around uh, the construction and feasibility of the scheme given the fact that we are looking to create a recessed sunken building. That will have impact on the spoil that it's removed from the site. We've consulted with county highways around that spoil removal and subject to the appropriate licenses and skips on the highway, then they are content that the construction of the building will not give any um, long-term highway safety issues. We recommend the scheme for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. No speakers on this one. So, Councillor Mia. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, I have been around there and uh, I've looked at it, but um, because it's a uh, very old road where everything is there, and when I looked at everything, um, to be precise with you, I haven't came across anything that I can complain against, what the officers has reported here. Um, unless any other um, colleagues has got anything to talk about, then obviously I'm going to listen to it, but I'm actually for it. So I would mind to propose it when the... Um, the discussion is over. Thank you. Councillor Metcalf. Thank you, Chair. Carbrook Lodge I know quite well. I used to live at number 12 Selwyn Road, which um, backed on to um, Carbrook Lodge. And in fact, as a youngster, I used to play in the garden at Carbrook Lodge with the, uh, with the children uh, living there. And all I would say, and it's, it's a, just a comment I would make, it's a very small garden to be putting another property in in my estimation, and I'm quite surprised that uh, this application uh, came forward uh, uh, with such a, a small area and not leaving a lot of garden left for either property. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Robinson. Yeah, 
Thank you, Chair. I'd just like to echo what the previous councillor said. I'm a little bit concerned that it seems rather a small garden area to build in. Um, is it possibly an overdevelopment of the site? Yeah, I have some concerns about that. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. We are looking these days to sort of more modern living. There's a number of properties that we've put through in the past which uh, don't have any gardens. Um, we don't use this as a precedent, obviously, but this is a sort of slightly different way of thinking than we used to think sort of five years ago. Councillor Coles. Thank you very much. Um, just earlier in the evening, we, um, we talked about um, another planning application where it was a very small garden and uh, we let it go through. Uh, I went to look at this site and I was, um, at first I thought it's going to be a great shame because I thought we we're going to lose the fencing completely. But in fact, it's going to be a relatively small area of that fencing where the um, access and ingress will be. Um, and therefore, I don't think it's going to have too much of a... Uh, um, an impact on the street scene itself and that rather nice um, old I don't know how old the fence is but it looks old um, that lovely grey colour will still be there in essence in terms of the actual um, building um, I think that whoever goes in and lives there will live there because they want to live there and they're going to be very happy with the size of the garden Thank you. Councillor Taylor. Thank you, Mr Chairman. It's interesting, isn't it, because we had an um, application last time where people were sinking the extension and you know, the level of it down. And I think they've achieved that here. I quite like it, actually. I think it's, a, it's a, a nice little development. It doesn't really impact on anybody else. And I, I've always learned if, it's, if it has a road running along the side, you get the corner plots or corner house, road running on the side with sufficient room to put a, a dwelling in the back then there's uh, to me there's no problem with that and I think this is a, by sinking in the ground uh, a, li a little bit like that has uh, taken a, a massive impact away from other residents uh, and then given them a very nice little uh, a little house there so very happy with it Mr Chairman Pro move to approve if you're happy with that. I'm, I'm just going to make a comment myself. I, I I'm came into the meeting 50-50 on this one because um, the, the, the flint wall, I was concerned about the uh, street scenes, us losing at that. It is only a small portion, but then I'm, especially with that picture there, you can see the quality of the craftsmanship at the low level and then what we get these days, modern build. Uh, which is the straight lines of the flints, you know, the, the, it, it's not the same sort of work. So when we, when they're doing the work for the dig out, are we going to be losing that wall and then it's going to get rebuilt? Or are, is there something that we can put in place to sort of try and preserve the, the wall and only lose the part that, um, that, that, that they need for the driveway? Thank you. That, that would be my only concern. So if, um, with, with the committee's indulgence, I'd, I'd like to sort of try and get that in, in place if we can. Um, but, but apart from that, I'm happy to take the move. And Councillor Mears can have it to second. So all those in favour, please raise. So, so unanimously approved for uh, Carisbrook Lodge. If you'd, like to, if you'd like to make a run for it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Councillor Murdoch, would you like to leave the room? <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Palmer. Thank, thank you, Chairman. Um, my advice to uh, all members in the room is that my view is that you should all have a personal interest uh, in this case, uh, given the relationship you have with the applicant. We had a discussion at the start of the agenda, those that deemed that their personal interest had moved to more one of a prejudicial interest has vacated and on that premise I shall uh, introduce the scheme. The application site is edged red and we can see it is a very modest first floor extension. Um, here's the existing front of the property. So we have a cat slide roof that comes down above the garage. The application proposes the cat slide is removed and replaced with a very modest one room extension. So in side view, here we have the cat slide roof, and here we have the first floor single room. Members, we consider that the change to this part of the scheme through here would not materially impact on the quality of the living environment for next door in terms of loss of outlook, loss of privacy, and remains wholly in character with the host property in particular and the properties in the wider character of the area. Chairman, we are recommending the scheme for approval. Thank you. Thank you. So this one is, uh, would normally go through delegated, but because it's um, one of the councillors that's applying, it's come to full committee. Those people <coughs> that feel that they've got too much involvement have left the room. We all obviously know Councillor Belsey, uh, but we can vote on this. Have we got any comments, Councillor Metcalf? Thank you, Chair. There's only one comment I would make, and that's in the site description, that it says it's a detached property on the eastern side of King's Drive. While I would dispute that, I'd say it was on the western side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Coles. Thank you. When I uh, first read this um, uh, application, when I was on the site visit on uh, Saturday, I hadn't actually realised it was Councillor Belsey's at all. Um, but I did think that um, then I realised it was Councillor Belsey and thought I understood why it's come to committee because I think as soon as I read this, I thought this would normally have been passed under delegation because I see no trouble with it at all. Thank you, sir. Do I have a mover? Councillor Mir, would you like to say a word? <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you, Chair. I never knew Councillor Belsey is that rich, really. He's, he's building another room there. My God. Well, I wish him all the best. And uh, truly, um, what I really like now, I think I like the new application than the old already left there because that um, roof goes in a, a very different angle, which is not nice to me. But this one looks good. And to me, I never knew it was Councillor Belsey's house until this evening I came here and I thought, oh, Councillor Belsey, it says C. Belsey, but who's that? <laughs> but now I realize it was Councillor Belsey. But I like the design, the way it's been put up, and I personally wouldn't mind to propose that. Um, as long as it's with the, within the personal interest, obviously, because we're all councillors. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Coles, you were going to propose. Yeah. Councillor Mir to second. All those in favour, please raise. Unanimously. Unanimously approved for the adaptions to 203 Kings Drive. Mr Palmer. Thank you, Chairman. We will endeavour to um, support many new housing. 
such schemes as we can. This forum of planning committee is the right forum. This case to be fought. Members will note we are still behind our five year house tax decline, um, but no new, new news there. Item number 15 is an information report um, requesting that we review our car parking standards. Um, that has been evaluated by my colleagues in planning policy and will go to cabinet for ratification. The advice in that report is that the right vehicle for reviewing our car parking standards is when we next review our local plan. So this report advises members that that matter will be put on hold until the review of the local plan. Item 16 is our quarterly performance um, report. Members will note that our performance is exceeding uh, national PIs, so that is all well and good. Item 17 is the um, appeal decisions. Uh, quick canter through the appeal decisions. 29 Rosebury Avenue is the first one. Uh, sorry, above the Food and Key is the first one. And broadly, they were looking in this position here to have a first floor balcony about 1.6 metres down from the front of the, from the houses flats here and that was dismissed on appeal for being out of character albeit down to the belt lots of flats had balconies so that appeal was dismissed 29 uh, Rosebury Avenue members who may know this building it has a detached garage in its front garden that detached garage was occupied by a independent person from the main house, such that they required the planning permission. Um, they applied the planning permission to keep it as a, a flat, essentially, a small bungalow, and that was dismissed on appeal for being significantly substandard in accommodation terms. 29 St Anne's Road, a, a rare beast in terms of an appeal decision. We are looking here at an application to do some works to a Tico tree that's under the bed rocks. It's quite a large tree. You can't see it from the main thoroughfare, which runs through here. You can only see it when you go into the rear car park of the court. Notwithstanding that, it had a TPO on it. It has a TPO on it. We resisted the lopping, the pollarding of the tree. The appeal inspector informed themselves because it doesn't have that high public profile, the follow link of the tree was acceptable and we lost that appeal. Thank you, Chairman. <coughs> Item number 18, South Downs National Park, that was the report. Do members want to see the pre-application scheme for Victoria Drive Medical Centre? Do we have time? We've got plenty of time for that. Well, as you know, it came up at a full council, so it, it would be wrong. Eh? It would be wrong not to uh, make a comment on it, and and really, to have a uh, la local car car parking scheme, or uh, would, uh, in my view, I suppose, satisfy all the problems that this committee always has when it comes to lack of car parking on development. And I, I think it would be wrong just to let this go through with no real comment from this committee. And I think that, that, that the feeling I've had in the past that this committee has always felt that we need to uh, uh, develop more car parking facilities for each dwelling within Eastbourne. Even if it's in the town centre, we should have a policy on it uh, and work towards that uh, and not just depend on what the national policy is or what the county's views are on, uh, on parking, I think we need to have our own views. So it would have been nice, uh, Mr Chairman, if my, my view are that we should have a policy, Eastbourne Borough Council should have a policy, even if it's coming out with their new borough, borough plan in the future. But um, it would be nice to hear what other members of the committee would think about the parking standards for Eastbourne Borough Council. And um, we're looking to sort of collect views 
these thoughts as sort of processes that will be put in place for them. Uh, we're not going to be able to implement anything for them, I don't think. Uh, but yeah, I, I do agree that we, I'm not sort of waving this through as though we're not going to do anything about it. Uh, it's, it's a serious concern. And we do need to do something. We need to have some sort of system in place where, where we get a bit more control, I think. So, um, Well, truly, um, this is where I was concerned that Dr. Um, Councillor Barry has raised the, uh, the actual issue. Um, we do have these situations here, and we know we have had some situations in the just recent past that, um, you know, about these parking issues. And I've always um, raised questions against the parking issues, but unfortunately I was told always it's the highway. If they don't, if they don't, they don't object anything. Then we can't do anything about it. We have to look at in merit of our own application with the um, uh, with the planning. So, but with the planning, I always find that um, a parking issue is always relevant with it. So when we permit some houses or some dwellings somewhere, it always applies with the, with the uh, parking. And nowadays, everywhere you go, not just in Eastbourne, in the whole country. The houses built by one car park space, that's what they say normally. But every household has two, three car parks, you know, two, three cars they need to park. So, however, I think it is a very important issue that you have raised, and uh, I think in 2021, when the uh, new thing is coming, we should really do something about it for the local policy. And I personally would grateful, be grateful for that. Thank you. Uh, just a comment, not to us, Chair, thank you, is um, I've, I've sat in on these planning uh, meetings on a number of occasions as a substitute, and we do seem to spend quite a bit of time in each of the meetings on deciding on the car parking spaces, and it does seem a little bit of a waste of valuable time uh, on that subject. Thank you. Just to make the comment that, yeah, I, I totally agree we need a policy for parking. Maybe to make a difference between parking with developments in town centre to out of town centre, as an example, because the criteria might have to be different for both different areas, but it's something that we can both all can work on. Yeah. Thanks, Chair. Yeah, just quickly on what you just said earlier about both parties having a discussion between themselves. Just bear in mind this comes to Cabinet on the 21st of March. When decisions will be made, perhaps we should have a discussion sooner rather than later and perhaps have our findings before that cabinet decision is made. This is going through cabinet at the moment, or will go through cabinet at the moment as it is. What we're looking to do is change policy for 2021. So, because I don't, th I don't think realistically that we can, we can do anything before then. Saying is our comment should be that we need to, to, to look Look at a, a policy for Eastbourne. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Or, or you can go for the policy where we uh, we already have zoned policies at the moment, which we, we work to. So the town centre has no parking. The next ring out has half a car per dwelling, uh, and and uh, the next one it sounds funny, but it does work. And then the next the next ring out has one and a half cars. 
and if you look over in the harbour, they got away with that by putting a fence across the driveway bit. You probably didn't notice it. They had a garage for one car, and then they had a driveway you could fit another car on, but if you put a gate across that you could open to use that, as the developer got, got round uh, and having uh, two car parking spaces within the harbour. But you can go with that policy, which we've been done, but we struggle with it, Mr Chairman. That's the trouble, so I think we need to... So, if we could just make sure that goes through to Cabinet, Mr. Palmer, in the minutes. Uh, yeah. in, in, in a direct response, all things will be on the table at the review stage. The most appropriate way for policy to be framed, we don't know because we haven't looked at it, but there's got to have, there will be some compromise in terms of very central urban locations to more suburban locations. Uh, so, the uh, new location of the Dr. Surgery, we have to say no one. Yep. Thank you, Chairman. Members may recall that this came pre application uh, and through to an outline approval. We have the Sainsbury's um, occupied building through here, the former pub. <coughs> the Bowling Green is now vacated, and the car park off Victoria Gardens, the toy drive through here. Green, uh, Green Street Parade, I think it's called. Albert Parade through here is, is the runner's shops. Uh, Green Street Surgery is off the slide down here. So what they're looking to do is to redevelop the site to have a new surgery, and it is a T-shape, L-shape building with access retained off the existing position through here to a car park court to the front. The majority of the trees are retained along Victoria Drive frontage. The elevation terms and this is purely uh, illustrative because they haven't pursued it through to um, a formal application so we have a glazed central uh, entrance in through here we have this is the view as you approach from victoria garden so the entrance is tucked in here this part of the building is to be a pharmacy uh, large pharmacy downstairs and then upstairs and through the building we have a range of um, Accommodation. So we have a in here we have the main reception and waiting area. The consulting rooms are shaded blue. The support services um, is shaded grey, and the commonal parts are shaded pink. So we have at ground floor level, as I say, a new pharmacy, a number of consulting rooms, not only for the existing surgery and the practitioners, but also complementary um, treatments, minor injuries. Um, etc. will be facilitated within this new building. It has the wholehearted support of the commissioners from uh, the NHS who are looking to move a lot of resources closer to the community than having them in a more of a district centre location. Any comments we will take back to uh, the applicants to inform them of their design prior to formally submitting members will of this committee will be receiving a formal re invite to a pre-application session that the applicants will be hosting with the local community thank you chairman i i would have to declare a probably possibly uh, as a personal uh, interest because my daughter is a neighbor so maybe before you discuss it, I'll leave. I know it's I know it's an informal, uh, and, and we'll probably go to a site visit. But perhaps the office, the uh, legal yeah. officer. Yeah. Fine, that's okay. Yeah. Well, I also would have to declare because I got a friend that lives in Victoria Gardens. <laughs> so. That's a, a personal interest, yeah. though. Personal, I don't think yeah. Uh, 
Uh, thank you very much for that, uh, Planning Officer. Um, and I fully understand that. However, I have already had some emails with you. And as this is actually my surgery, I do feel that I do have um, an interest in this. And when it comes to planning, I probably won't sit in on it. Well, no, I haven't got any of these interests because um, uh, it's Old Town and uh, I haven't got any clue, but I know the space where we have discussed in the past about that and we had the formal um, permission and all that stuff. But I, I personally support this scheme uh, to get this um, surgery done because... No, no, I understand. Yeah, it's... Yeah, right. But personally, um, well, my question was the uh, the entrance uh, shows there. Um, officer, can we go back to the entrance, please? That entrance, the driving entrance. Uh, is it in um, is it in uh, Victoria Gardens or is it in Victoria Drive? Victoria Gardens. This, this, this is extended access to the one currently exists in Victoria Gardens. Gardens. That's fine then. That answers my question because um, because Victoria Drive is very busy road. It's best to take it somewhere so I think that answers my question thank you Thank you. Nights. <laughs>